A few words on Tetra Pak. We are a food processing and packaging company, a privately held company with a vision that goes, we commit to making food safe and available everywhere. So food safety is at the heart of what we do. Our motto, it protects what's good. And what that refers to is, of course, the content of the packages we sell. So we are all about protecting that food so it gets to consumers as safe as possible in every corner of the world. A few facts on Tetra Pak. We are roughly 12 billion euro in turnover. We are around 24,000 employees. We are present in 175 countries in the world. We were founded in 1952 and uh, we sold 187 billion packages last year. 1961 was a key year for us because that was when the aseptic technology was launched, which is a foundation on how you provide liquid food safe and available everywhere. We serve around 5,000 factories, liquid food factories mainly, in the world, where there is around 100,000 or more than 100,000 physical assets where things every now and then goes wrong and things that needs to be in control, processes that needs to be under control. Our view on how demands are increasing on liquid food manufacturing is there is three angles to that. One is the, the food safety aspect, how you secure product and food quality. Uh, the other one is environmental performance, which you have to do at the same time. And then it's all about how do you do that as cost efficient as possible. Because there is a lot of pressures in the value chain, of course, on uh, producing more cost effectively. A lot of cost pressures from retailers, etc. We have decided that there are six areas that we invest a lot in. One is the Internet of Things. It's how you connect things. We will come back to that, to our interpretation of that. But it's how you connect so you have transparency on data. It's how you manage data large amounts of data, because if you don't manage that data, it's very difficult to do something meaningful with it. It's how you do advanced analytics to create insights from the data you have. It's visualization. How do you make these insights easily accessible to people so people actually do something different with those insights? It's virtualization and it's e-commerce, which we will not cover so much today, but of course the trade flows is very different when uh, in business to business more and more trade goes into e-commerce as well. Our interpretation of this, we have three main areas that we invest in. One is a connected workforce. How is our workforce connected? We have 24,000 employees in more than 150 countries they are present. They work in more than 175 countries. How do we connect them? And how do we make our global knowledge and expertise available at the fingertips of this workforce immediate, real time? Advanced analytics is how to provide actionable insights to predict critical failures from happening before they happen. So how do you prevent problems instead of reacting to them? Connected solutions, it's how you connect equipment and devices to consistently provide useful data everywhere. So we will now look into these three examples. Connected workforce, it's if you think that we have something, a data center in the middle, which is really the heart of everything. One aspect is, of course, how you push out quality and performance alerts to the workforce, to the sites where our equipments are installed. Another aspect is how you connect workforce and expertise so that all the knowledge that is required is not possible to get into one human brain today. So how do we do that? We do that by virtual technologies, of course. Advanced analytics, it all starts with data. You know, there is nothing to analyze unless the data is there and it's well organized, well structured and meaningful. When you have that data available, you apply like machine learning technologies together with the domain knowledge you have. Our domain knowledge is, of course, in liquid food manufacturing. Domain knowledge is very important as well, you know, because it's, you need to understand how you're going to teach the machines to do this analysis. From that, you get very valuable insights of what is going to happen. From that, 
you can then take actions that prevent critical failures. We will look at some very tangible examples on how we do that. Connected solutions. If you think about a, um, a cloud in the middle, you see Microsoft Azure here. Tetra Pak is in collaboration with Microsoft on managing data. It is about equipment sending data to our centers through the Microsoft Azure cloud solutions. It's also how we send back insights and advised actions back to the field force we have and to equipment directly. So that the equipment then self-diagnose and say, this part will fail in a week's time or something. That's what we mean with connected solutions. Looking into this now, connected workforce, I think it's all about smart devices. We are on iOS devices. You can be on any device, of course. We are on iOS. It's how we make relevant data easily accessible for those at the factory floor so they can take the right decisions. What you see the example of here on the screen is how you provide quality and performance data real time so they know what is the performance. That gives a detailed understanding of the quality and the performance of the equipment if it's in basic conditions, etc. It also sends alerts. So if we see a deteriorating trend, if a mean time between failure increases on a specific failure mode, we can send alerts and warn people that there is a deteriorating trend. There is probably something to look into before it gets serious. Another aspect is when you do maintenance, whether it's corrective or preventive or whatever type of maintenance you do. One problem when you have a large workforce is to get consistency and that everyone does the same thing and they do it in the right order so equipment gets in basic conditions and are the way it should be so you can secure quality production. Having up-to-date instructions all the time on what should be done takes away a lot of this reliance you have on individuals that they do exactly the way they should. We also have an easy access to problems that we have had or quality problems that have been on different types of products around the world. How those were solved is easily accessible. So when someone experience a problem, they go and look and see, does anyone else have had a similar problem before? And then they know how that was solved at that time. Gives them a good starting point for finding a solution. Looking at some examples here of the machine learning approach, for example, it's all about predicting a critical quality failure with high confidence up to a week before it happens. The part you see here is a ceiling bar, which is very, it's a very critical component in a um, carton packaging system because it's the, it's the component that basically makes the seal that makes sure there is package integrity and the pack is aseptically tight. So predicting failure of that is very important for food safety because when this component fails, you start to have package integrity problems and thereby you get unsterile packages. So what we do is that we collect, we have data then, um, and it's roughly 100,000 data points to predict one inductor. So you need 100,000 data points basically over a week. It's typically 10 to 15 different data sets, but then you need them very often during that week. So it gets to roughly 100,000 data points for predicting one failure. Today, we can predict 85% of the inductor failures one week before they happen by understanding that data and analyzing it. So the machine has learned how to, what to look for and gives then alarms on when this will fail. It's of course very useful because then a change of this component can be planned so it will not cause a big downtime, it will not cause a lot of destroyed production, so it becomes a, a, a preventive change instead of a run to failure. But it also becomes an optimized cost, of course, because you use the component as long as possible and don't change it too early. So you optimize the quality aspect with the cost aspect and get the maximum out of it without jeopardizing food safety, for example. Condition monitoring, 
The example here is a servo motor that drives the whole jaw system of a machine that creates the packages. It's a very critical function in the machine. When that uh, breaks down, it's typically a big, big failure. And depending on what country you're in, you don't always have all the spare parts. It can become a very long stop because you need to import parts and with customs and everything. So by, by predicting the failure here, and here you see with this method, we predict up to uh, more than 95% probability one month before the failure is gonna occur. The typical lifetime of this component is two to seven years. And it depends a lot on the temperature, the humidity, it depends on a lot of variables. So you cannot just change it anytime. And here this saves a lot of cost and it avoids very critical quality failures as well. We know that this is the beginning of the journey and a lot more will happen. This happens at a quite high pace, is our experience now. And uh, that's why we go big time into this now and try to do a lot of things, all to serve our customers better.